Hello everyone, this is Jim from Model Train Technology, and today our project is this HO uh, dome car with the diner, and this is an interesting challenge. So usually we have an opportunity to put in our HO light board, and the dome goes all the way across, and you, you may have seen one of our previous videos on that. Today we can see that that's not going to work in this circumstance, so we'll put that aside. Our next strategy is to use some of our N-scale boards, and you can see that we've run into some problems. Even with the short N-scale board, that's not going to really work. This is a really cool car. There's an upper deck. Uh, there's a lounge area here. There's seating underneath here, and then there's another lounge area over here. So we've got uh, four different lighting areas to work on, and each of them presents a slightly different challenge. So uh, we are going to use a combination of some of our other products. Uh, this is a car, this is a board, uh, we've been using this for the end scale. This is our dome board, and this doesn't have a decoder on it, but it's very thin, uh, LED spaced evenly across, and it's the right size, uh, width-wise, to fit in here. It's got the right amount of lighting, and the way we designed this is you can cut this at any point and shorten up the length. Now, the, the next issue is, all right, so that's great, Jim. How are we going to light this thing? Well, uh, a couple of different strategies here. This is our uh, nano board, and there are no LEDs on the board, but this is small enough that this can fit behind and inside the wall of one of these, uh, these areas. And uh, then we can also use our caboose board. Ironically, we're going to use a caboose board and a HO scale uh, board. And so we can place that here and underneath inside here or a combination of our light boards uh, and so what we're going to do is is uh, work on this uh, i've already marked out where i want to cut the first section this is going to go underneath i'm going to use the remaining part of the board over here and then i'm going to use my caboose board on this side uh, so we're going to have two decoders uh, these two decoders in this we're going to set them to the same address and the main lights will uh, function generally together, but I think what we're going to do is we'll experiment a little bit about being able to turn the dome lights off with one of the boards um, and then uh, the lower section with another one. Now, if we do that, we may have to split the, uh, the addresses between these. Now, one of the other things is this particular customer, like a lot of us, has been uh, cooped up at home and the club where he normally runs this with his DCC system uh, has been closed down. So uh, what we're going to do is turn on the auto on functions for both of these boards. So when the car is placed on track and 12 volts, you know, DC is applied, doesn't have to be uh, DCC, uh, the lights will come on automatically. Now we'll set the decoder so eventually uh, when he does get back to the club, he can control all the lights. Uh, but in the meantime, we just want to be able to pick up the car, put it on the track with power, just and uh, and just have it go on. So that's our project for today. The first thing that we've decided to do is take the uh, the dome board that we showed you earlier, and we've marked a place on the board. We've scored it, and uh, that will fit in the top section here. It actually fits perfectly. And one thing I just wanted to point out about the dome board: on either end are solder pads. So on this end and on this end. So if you need it, you've got, and we're going to cut it, where you can use both ends of the board and it will light uh, the first, in this case, the first three and the second five. So all we're going to do here is just take our uh, X-Acto uh, knife and just, uh, we scored it earlier, and uh, we're just going to cut through the PCB board and just take our time to do that. And actually, uh, one of the things about this, once you get the score pretty far down, uh, this will just break in half. And there you go. And so we're going to take a little sanding piece here. Whoops. I'm going to just use this, and I'm just going to sand the end of it. Just get any burrs off. There we go. over here and that will fit
perfectly in the roof. I mean, just looks like it was just designed for that. Well, actually it was. So, <laughs> and what we're gonna do is run some wires uh, off the pads and then along these window uh, frames. And we're going to use some clear gallery glass so uh, that that won't show as you look from the top. So in fact, if you look like this, oops, let's move that into the camera. You really can't see the board at all. So when it's in there and you're looking anywhere, any angle from horizontal, I mean, even if you're looking sideways, you can barely see that. So that's the, that's the first step. Okay, so we're just gonna add some uh, solder to the pads and I just used some blue tape. This is a very uh, lightweight board. I'm just gonna pinch off a little bit of the end of the wire on either side of these things and uh, just twist it, twist, give it a little twist just to clean it up, get my soldering iron out and you can see that this just is going to take a split second just to get a little bit of solder on there and that's all you need to do. All right. The other thing that we do is we always tin the wires. Uh, that, uh, this has ro rosin, uh, this is rosin coarse solder and the rosin melts and creates an acid that cleans the metal and that just gives us a nice uh, connection with the metal and then we're going to clip these very short because we don't need much room and i'm trying to do this with the camera about a foot away from me or the workplace about a foot away from me because the camera's in the way so hopefully you can you can see i'm just clipping off the wire and take that off and so what we're going to do I'll do one right here and we'll just solder that right onto the end of the board just touch it lightly because both end, both the wire and the pad have solder on it so we just have to melt them and that didn't connect right let's do it again there we go and we're done with that step the next step we want to uh, do is attach this board uh, to this surface here on the dome. And this is pretty uh, flat. Sometimes we use foam tape to uh, take care of the inconsistencies. We're gonna try first to use double stick tape. This is just Scott's double stick tape. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take a length of it and put it very, uh, not, not so hard down on the layout because we won't get the board out. I'll put that gently and we just run a knife on either side of this, oops. Okay, and then we'll just peel this up, get that part off and get that part off. Stick them over here on the side, ah, sticking to my fingers. All right, so now what we're gonna try to do is lift this up and since we didn't press it very hard, it wanted to stick to our dome board, all right? A little bit of trim up on this end. Let me just see if I can clean that up just a little bit. There we go. All right, and the next thing is just to insert it right into that slot and uh, pick it up. We don't want to push down because we've got these things. We'll hold it up and push it down and there we go. And so now the first, and then we're just, like I said, we're just gonna run these wires here and keep them loose for the time being because we've got some other lighting to do here. Uh, so we'll connect that up in a minute. Okay, here I wanted to show you a little bit of cleanup work that we did. Um, let me zoom in. So we put the board in before you saw that, but now we had to run the black wires and we ran them up the frame, as I mentioned in the uh, introduction. and. I'm taking this picture now because you can see it looks like white glue. That's actually something called gallery glass. And uh, we'll show you this. This is the before picture. And in about uh, 10 minutes or so, that'll all be clear. And so that's how we, uh, and it's a little bit rubbery. It's, uh, it's got some adhesive properties, but it's rubbery. So uh, it sticks enough to the plastic to hold this very thin wire. But if you really had to take it off, you could just peel it off and it wouldn't leave a mark on the plastic or on the window. Okay, this is where things got interesting. So remember, this is the, the dome section and this seating area, uh, if I split the, the, 
the walls a little bit. This guy comes out, a little tricky, okay? Comes out and you can see that there's a seating area inside here and uh, then there's a back wall. So what we did is we used the other part of the dome board and fasten it to the roof here or the ceiling and we're going to put that back in and then we're going to run those wires into this section in the back and we're going to hide the nano board right in here so it won't be seen so uh, that'll be kind of cool okay we wanted to work on this back section here and um, sort of studied this a little bit we have two caboose boards and we could have lined them up back to back that would have given us uh, six lights for this back area but this is kind of a reading relaxing area and I didn't think that was really necessary so we've got a couple of other options and this is what we came up with this is one of our LED chips that we use for building lighting and all of our caboose boards have some extra pads let me see if I can move that closer uh, not too close because then it gets out of focus but uh, there's always an extra set of pads to connect to the main uh, LEDs so that's what we're going to use to connect our chip so it will light with along with the rest of the lights uh, we also have the auxiliary pads which on a caboose would be used for the rear lantern light or a rear blinking light and we're going to connect those up to uh, the, probably to the dome car which is the, the thing that we showed you earlier so that way we can control the main lights and the dome lights back uh, at that part of the car and then uh, we moved away from using the nano board which I showed you earlier uh, what, what I think we're going to do is for this back section is use another caboose board and that'll give us control for the lower lighting uh, down here and we've already put the dome car in here so we're going to use two caboose boards uh, we're going to use their auxiliary pads to light an extra chip on this end and to light the uh, dome, uh, sorry, the, the, uh, the lower section and the upper section. So anyway, you'll see that as we, uh, we uh, put this together. All right, I wanted to give you a little progress report. We put the dome car seating back in. You'll remember we have a dome light underneath that. We ran the wires through this uh, section of uh, the bulkhead here and we have our caboose board on we just have it connected to our DCC system the blue light we're going to paint black uh, we're going to paint over it with some flat black paint uh, the blue light on all of our boards indicate there's power to the board and everything's working fine uh, here is the LED chip we haven't soldered it yet uh, we put a little piece of shrink tube in uh, and that'll help us with wire management when we connect it to the ceiling and all I'm going to do now is just turn on the main lights over here and so that will be for lighting this section. Uh, this LED chip will light at the same time. We'll show you that in a couple of minutes. The other cool thing is we now have lighting underneath and uh, you can see the people in there and we can turn that off and all of our uh, boards allow you to adjust the brightness and you can set it at anything you want. So we're going to set it sort of at a moderate reading level there. We're going to push the save button. It flashes to tell us we've got that done. And so we can turn that, uh, those lights on and off. All right. And uh, on the main lights, one of the things that we can do is put it on uh, into fade mode and it will fade up and down. Uh, so that's kind of a cool effect that you can do when you have your DCC system. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to just have this go auto on. So all the lights are going to come on uh, and we'll show you that in a bit. Okay, we're almost finished with the uh, gluing of the wires in the gallery grass. Uh, you can see now that it's uh, almost clear. This one spot over here is a little bit opaque. Uh, we'll let that dry up. And then we're going to put another very thin layer on top of the wire to kind of keep it held down. Uh, the gallery glass runs like water, and that's why we actually have this tilted up. So this section is, is level, and so when we put the gallery glass, it stays where we want it. Um, and so uh, we'll just put another layer down and that'll be ready to go uh, in a couple of minutes. At this point, we finished waiting for the gallery glass glue to dry. We added the second caboose board and we hooked up the dome board to the auxiliary pads. And we've also painted over the blue light and we've just got this connected to our DCC system. So I'm gonna hit the main lights 
which will be the caboose board. And like the other side, they fade, they can fade up and down as you choose. And then the auxiliary lights for the dome car. So this will be flipped over. And now the last step is to put the uh, remaining dome car in connection to the lower level into this section here, and then connect that to the wheel pickups. Here's the completed installation. Uh, we're gonna put the top back on. We'll just set it lightly and uh, test it. Uh, you'll notice we use shrink tube to, uh, for wire management, and just use super glue to glue it in there. And we don't shrink the tube, actually. We just use it to, as, a, as a pipe, if you will. And there's the, uh, how we did the dome car, and this is the second caboose. And then underneath, which you can't see, is the second part of the dome. And uh, so that's it. Let me get this on the tripod, and then I'll show you how it looks. Here's the final car, and we have all of the lighting system set up. We can fade in and out uh, either side. We can turn the lights on and off for the dome in the middle. And uh, in this case, it has an, we set the auto on feature. So uh, when you just add 12 volts uh, power to the track, not DCC, all the lights will just come on automatically. And that's, that's what the customer wanted. So this is a more challenging project than some of the other ones. Uh, two caboose boards, who would have known in an HO car, but that worked great. We, we cut the dome board in half. Uh, it wasn't exactly half, a little bit longer than the top, and then we used it for lighting down here. So really a great, great project. And uh, a little bit of wire management, we used the shrink tube to keep things uh, organized. And interestingly enough, there's a little blue man here at the end, and he was about a scale foot taller, and we couldn't understand what was going on putting the, the whole car back together again, but this guy was too big for the seat. It was hitting the dome, so uh, we sanded his bottom <laughs> and and uh, had him relax a little bit, and uh, we were able to get the dome back on. So, But anyway, great-looking car and uh, we're super excited to, for the customer to get that. We are going to uh, head off right now and ship it back to him.